have uh, moved up the speakers a bit uh, because of one cancellation, unforeseen cancellation. Uh, now we will have uh, the presentation from Ms. another Mr. Stephen Bennett on material science and best practices in the intermodal industry. Mr. Stephen. So if I'm servicing my equipment in that manner, knowing full good and well that I'll never get the same bolt load on that bolt that I, that I got initially, then I have no consistent repeatable means of closure, correct? What's happening here? Can I, anybody to want to take a guess as to what physical characteristics taking place here? It's simple friction. So as those threads interact with the thrusters and the load-bearing surface of the nuts to eliminate the friction and eliminate the galling so that we can achieve consistent and repeatable means of closure when it comes to your bolted flange connections. By simply eliminating the friction involved, we gain consistency within our supply chain and. and The first thing you'll notice is I've actually got a higher value than I even started out with with a brand new bolt. So it went from 38 to 54. No, the first, the first one, the brand new fastener was 50. 3,200, and now I got the, the 5,400 pounds. Go ahead and loosen it and tighten it again. Fifty eight hundred pounds. Yeah, it's four hundred pound load difference is basically more consistent. And we'll do it one more time, Richie, please. Fifty eight hundred pounds. So as you can see, the consistency here is the key. And that's what I wanted to everybody to see, that if we lubricate our fasteners properly and we follow engineering controls as we assemble and work on our equipment as it runs through our supply chain and through our service providers, we will all have much higher success and much less leaks to deal with within our industry. It's critical that we do this, especially in this period in time as it relates to the age of the container. This is a young industry. The world's getting to be a smaller place. These containers are going to become the mainstay of shipping chemicals globally. There's basically 400, 450,000 of them in existence today. Within another 10 years, there's going to be pushing a million or over a million of these containers. Container ships now are as big as islands. They're, they're carrying 20,000 ETUs per ship. It's, the, I, I cannot stress to you how important something as simple as this will affect all of those big global picture aspects. If we can contain our leaks by selecting the right material and, requ and requiring that our service providers perform their function the right way, we, we, can, we can really make a huge difference within the supply chain on a global basis. Customers, shippers, the like, they're afraid to do things because of the reliability aspects that the tank container is, its reputation over the years. This is a very simple problem to fix, provided we all decide that it needs, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cause worth championing, 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 excuse me. 
to champion and uh, training our service providers to handle this stuff the right way is a very important facet of that. So a little bit of science, training and education can make a, bit, a big difference in the world. And uh, if you guys have any questions, please come to the Amphico uh, booth and Richie and I would be happy to talk to you about this and we can answer any questions or do some other demonstrations there if you'd like. I'd also like to thank the Amphico group for inviting us. It's my pleasure to be here. It's my first time to India. I must admit we have uh, a very uh, different opinion of what India is, but the fact that I'm here and have, I, I have experienced it for myself, I, 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 could, I could not be more, more thrilled with wonderment as to the, to, to the country, and the people, and, and the culture. I have not met anybody here that wasn't the most friendliest person I had ever hoped to meet. And I want to thank you for y'all's hospitality. Thank you, Amphico, and I look very much forward to coming back next year. Thank you all very much. And on behalf of organizers, we would like to present this plantation certificate. The three uh, trees have been planted in the name of Stephen uh, in Karnataka state of our country to enhance the environment. Already there, no? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll just open it then. The first one? Yes, sir. Okay, um, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and get started while Richie uh, sets up some equipment. Um, this is going to be a little different than your typical presentation. Uh, it's going to be a little interactive, somewhat uh, interacting with the group. Uh, I'd like to first off uh, start with thanking the Amphico group uh, for uh, asking us to be here. We're very happy to be involved with the uh, company and have them represent us in this part of the world. And uh, if you have any questions, um, please come by the Amphico uh, booth in the, in the corner of the facility here, and we'd be happy to talk to you and answer any questions that you have. Um, what we want to talk about today are two things, and they go hand in hand, material science and best practices as far as application so that we can provide you with the best possible leak-free environment within your tank container and your operations. This is a ride type program. We call it the ride type program. Amphico, again, is uh, spearheading the ride type program within this uh, area of the world. And it quite simply is a risk management program. And it addresses reliability, safety, and leak free and operations of your equipment. And uh, anybody in the room that I speak with that operates these containers, uh, knows that they are most exposed at their bolted flange connections. If you have a leak at a bolted flange connection, it, it causes major problems very quickly. It ruins relationships with your customers, it damages the environment, and it costs you big money for cleanup, root cause failure analysis, all kinds of paperwork. It is a very, uh, it's a very ugly thing to have to deal with. So we have created a program that is very easy for you to adopt and to implement to provide you the highest level of security within the bolted flange connections possible. And we do this with a two-prong approach. One is technology. What I mean by that is the material science involved with your 
gasketing selection, the type of materials that you choose to use on the equipment, and number two is the application, the people that are handling your equipment. They, they need to be educated, they need to understand the science involved with application, how, to, how fasteners interact with the gasket and the flanges so that you get the best possible performance out of the operational aspects of your equipment. Ride tight is quite simply a Six Sigma approved program for fluid sealing management, which defines the, and controls the specification, again, selection, sourcing, assembly, and the documentation that goes along with all of the facets involved for all of your bulk transport equipment, rail cars, tank containers, over the road uh, equipment. We provide training, quality control, packaging, assembly, torque instructions, assembly instructions, gasket specifications, recommendations, troubleshooting, root cause failure analysis. We also do engineering assistance, and if you need anything forensically analyzed, we will provide that service for you as well. Ride Tight is a compliance-driven program, and many people do not understand or, un or know about these global compliance aspects and standards. CFR 178.2 specifically addresses the United Nations needs for applicability and responsibility. And I've pulled one section out of this that, that speaks to exactly what we're dealing with, but I invite each and every one of you to, to look up your UN regulations or your CFR 49 regulations and take a look at the 178.2. And this specifically speaks to what we're gonna talk about today and, and some of the things that we're gonna share with you. So with information specifying the types and dimensions of the closures, meaning your valves and stuff on your tanks, including gaskets and any other component needed, talking about fasteners, talking about all the other ancillaries items that go along with that, to ensure the packaging is capable of su successfully passing the applicable performance test. This information must be included, any procedures to be followed. So if somebody's installing a gasket, something as simple as a gasket on your container and they don't have the proper instructions or the proper values to utilize in order to install that, then they, they basically are out of compliance with this global UN directive. Those. Uh, including the closure instructions for inner packaging receptacle to effectively assemble and close the packaging for the purpose of preventing leaks during transportation. This does not say that you only have to do it well enough to pass the bubble leak check at the depot. You are required by UN governing directives to make sure that that piece of equipment will not leak during transportation. Do you understand the difference? There's a big difference. And what we're gonna show you is how to achieve that because it's specifically written in these UN regulations that not only are you supposed to do everything proactively you possibly can to prevent leaks during transportation, but closure instructions must provide for a consistent and repeatable means for closure that is sufficient to ensure that the package will not leak. And that's a, that's a very powerful statement. So, we're going to demonstrate to you how you can utilize some very inexpensive things within your supply chain, along with your service providers, to provide you the, the knowledge that you need to implement this very, very easily. And we'll get to that in a minute. So the technology from a selection standpoint uh, in, involves gaskets, and it, it involves gaskets that go on these bottom discharge, top discharge, manways, all the different types of closures that are as associated with tank containers all the way from T11 through T50 and T70 equipment, even cryogenics. All of the gaskets that we provide have special technology employed to allow you a higher degree of reliability in a leak-free environment. We basically guarantee you uh, for dedicated equipment that your, your tank will not leak from a period of a hydro test to a hydro test. That's a five-year period. Uh, this technology works 
best on dedicated equipment, more so than it does on your one tripper arrangements. But typically, the hazardous class six to class eight cargoes are carried in dedicated equipment. It's, it's required by law. Each gasket comes individually packaged. It has an assembly sheet associated with that. Richie, you might want to hold one of those up for the, the audience to see. It identifies the type of closure we're dealing with. It identifies the fasteners being utilized so that the, the assembler can identify what torque value to use in association with that fastener. We're going to do a little demonstration so that I can, I can show you guys that not all fasteners are the same. Even though they're the same diameter, they're different strengths. It's important to know that you can only apply a certain amount of load to one type of grade fastener versus uh, using the same value for all. Then this becomes a, uh, and the, then the, the technician would sign it and date it. This provides you with traceability and documentation throughout your supply chain, simply scans it into your database or our database, or even better, Amphico's database where they can control these documents and you can access them later if you need to. It becomes a matter of course document per Six Sigma for, tra for full traceability. Uh, this is a un this is a, an example of a torque sheet that's uh, non uncompleted at this point, and it's very simple, uh, several steps. The technician will basically assign the tank number, the location, uh, identify what fastener. You can see he circled the A270, which is a very common fastener for the containers. He's identified, he's related that fastener with the torque value in the middle of the page, where you see we circled the, the, the torque sequencing that he's done to install it. Uh, identifies the flange type, whether it's a four bolt, six bolt, so forth and so on. He signs it and dates it, and then this can be scanned, faxed, or whatever you need for, for your company's co complete traceability. Now, with, within this, we're gonna talk a little bit about material science. And I'm going to pass this around the room. This is a nice example, a hands-on. Uh, I want everybody to see I've got basically eight different types of gasket materials on this ring. Each, each one has, this is what the gasket started out like when it was installed. This is what the gasket looked like after it was subjected to the, the, the flange pressure that applies to the material. And a, and a little bit of heat over a very short period of time. So not only is the selection of the gasket material critical within your decision making, but you must understand that your decision is not based only on chemical compatibility, but it is based on mechanical stability as well. If you pick a material that is chemically compatible, but it is not mechanically stable within the equipment that you're operating, you will not have a successful operation. You will have leaks. You will be dealing with leaks that you don't understand why they are occurring. As you, will, as you can tell, all of these samples that I have here all behave differently. All gasket materials have an Achilles heel. They do not all behave the same way. Each one, each type of material has different physical characteristics. It's critical within your decision tree that you understand that compatibility is not the only thing that you have to consider for a leak-free operation, okay? So I'm gonna pass this around, y'all take a look at it. Again, I wanna emphasize this because we're talking about the things that you're most exposed at, and that is your bolted flange connections. The bolted flange system is a system. It's not just a gasket, it's not just a flange, and it's not just the fasteners. It's, they all have to work together. They, it has to be a balance. Uh, chemical compatibility, mechanical requirements, assembly considerations, also have to play into this. this. These are very critical elements within the balance of these forces. All three must work in harmony. If, if we're using 
used fasteners or we're using fasteners that haven't been taken care of properly or the flange is warped or there's some damage to it. You, you can't expect the gasket to, to overcome those issues. It's, it's very critical that all three of these be treated equally. Now, typically when most folks have a leak, y'all hold your hands up when I ask, typically what, what's blamed for causing that leak? The gasket, right? It's, 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 human, it's human nature. You're gonna blame the gasket for the leak, but nobody is paying attention to these other things. Were the right fasteners used? Were those fasteners capable of, of compressing that gasket to the proper gasket stress so the gasket material could actually work the way it was designed? Has somebody inspected the flanges? Are the flanges warped? So there are other reasons things leak besides just the gasket <clears throat> caused the leak, okay? Uh, we also under, we need to understand that these are, these are portable pressure vessels. The, UN, the United Nations consider these UN portable tanks. They are, they are designed under ASME code regulations. They are movable pressure vessels. They should be treated as such. It's not just a garbage can full of liquid that you guys move around. These are pressure vessels. People press these things up all the time to check for leaks, nitrogen blankets, all, uh, discharging the tank, so forth and so on. Every time that tank undergoes a pressure cycle, it dynamically changes the ancillary aspects of the flanges and the gaskets and the fasteners associated with that. If I press a, 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 a T20 tank up to its working pressure, uh, T20 is probably 6.9 bar, that tank should operate safely under any pressure under 6.9 bar. If I decide to press that thing up to 50 PSI to check for leaks, it should, it should be able to maintain a leak-free environment. But we need to understand that the, every time we do that, it wants to offload the bolted flanges. It's, that pressure is trying to push those valves off the tank. So there's dynamics that take place there. The only thing doing the work are the fasteners. The gasket can't work if the, if there's, if the, if the, if the fasteners cannot maintain the, the preload that they've been given. If the fasteners aren't applied correctly or they're not torqued correctly, they will not have enough preload to resist vibrational aspects as you transport your tank. The nuts will vibrate loose when it leaves the depot as it bounces down the road to go to the, to the customer for loading. You, we, have, we have got to get at least 50% of yield on whatever fasteners are used to sufficiently guarantee that those fasteners can do the job that they're designed to. We're going to have a little demonstration so I can show you guys how easily that can be achieved. Uh, if the fasteners aren't doing the work, the gasket can't do the work it was designed, the flange can't do the work it was designed to do. So a lot of attention needs to be paid to the fasteners within our industry, which typically is not taking place now. Gasket stress is very important. If I select a spiral wound gasket to put on an ISO tank, because that's my plant specification, I need to know that even though that's the plant specification, that's not necessarily a good selection to put on a, 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 a tank container. The tank container, unless it's a T50 or a T70, was not designed to support spiral wound gaskets for any piece of equipment, T11 to T23. If simply because that's the plant specification does not mean that that's the kind of specification that we should employ on our, on our, on our transport equipment. Okay? These things are commonly done in our industry today because people don't understand the dynamics. It's our job to educate the world to these dynamics so people can make the right decisions. Okay? So I'm going to turn this over to Richie. We're going to do a demonstration right now from a material selection standpoint. Even, and we're going to use Teflon as an example here because Teflon is recognized as being a compatible material to most anything. But we need to understand its, its physical characteristics and we need to understand it has an Achilles heel. So Richie, if you would put a piece of uh, Teflon, virgin Teflon inside the Skidmore. I'd like for you guys, if you can, come closer to the, to the gauge where you can see the gauge and feel free to ask any questions you'd like. 
but I want, uh, well, we're going we're, we're gonna to put a load on this piece of gasket material, and this, this is a Skidmore Wilhelm fixture. We use it for testing and training, and what you're going to see is that the, these, the, the Teflon is supported between two plates to simulate the flange, and there's a bolt through the middle, and we're simply going to put a load on the, that apparatus. We're not going to overstretch the bolt, and we're, not, and we're not able to deform the plates. So everything that we're addressing here is going to specifically address the material. What we're going to do is leave that in here for a few minutes. I want to talk to you about these physical characteristics. As you can see from the sample pack I passed around, not all, every one of those gasket samples behave differently. But the phenomenon, scientifically, is referred to as creep and cold flow. All Teflon-based materials exhibit this characteristic, creep and cold flow. The longer it's left under compression, at high compression, the more this takes place. Now, don't get me wrong. Teflon is a great material to use. You just have to know where to use it. So if you use it in a low boat load application, like typically the safety relief valve on top of a tank, it's a threaded connection. It's axial rotation. You can't put enough load on, a, on that SRV to cause this phenomenon to happen. Teflon works very well in that application. It does not work well under a bolted application because there's five to six thousand psi gasket stress being applied to it so if it's in a lo very low bolt load application manways is a great application threaded safety relief valves is a great is a great application one reason their teflon seats work so well in the butterfly valves and the foot valves because there's not enough force being applied to the teflon to cause it to deform in this manner again a good application but if you carry it too far and you decide to put Teflon on bolted flange connections because it's compatible, not understanding these physical characteristics, I can guarantee you, you're going to have leaks that you don't understand you're having. Okay? This creep and cold flow phenomenon is very important. And our company lends assistance to all companies around the world to, uh, on the engineering aspect of this. And we help you with the selection aspect as to where to use Teflon, where not to. Okay? Richie, how far down we got now? So it's lost 1,000 pounds of load within the first few minutes. Allowed to be sat in a tank, tank sits overnight, the truck comes to pick it up the next day, it goes to where it needs to go. Well, you're going to be down about half the, the load that it was applied the day before. So we need to understand this. But there are simple things you can do. We can apply a little bit of uh, uh, applied science to the Teflon and, and that that Teflon can be me mechanically enhanced much like you mechanically enhance mild steel to strain hardened steel. They call that expanded Teflon. Expanded Teflon is a very good material to be used uh, in high boat load conditions provided it has enough compression for the gasket to, to get the gasket stress. My point here is once you mechanically enhance the Teflon, it becomes 10 times stronger than virgin Teflon. I've got a little couple of samples here. Richie's going to ask for a volunteer to pull these apart so that somebody can give, you'll have a, an idea as to how strong, how much difference there is in the strength. So he just pulled the uh, virgin Teflon sample apart, broke fairly, fairly easily.
Surprisingly stronger? Surprisingly stronger. So this is what I mean when I talk about selection being a very important aspect here. If you understand the material science, you can select the right material to do the job that you expect the material to do for you. But if you don't, typically people are going to make the wrong decision because they don't understand the material science involved with gasket materials as a whole. Okay. So just to give you an idea of what these look like, this is a virgin Teflon to the left, glass-filled Teflon in the middle. Now why would you think people would put glass-filled part particulates in, in Teflon? They put the glass filler in there to, to mitigate this creep and cold flow phenomenon that takes place with virgin Teflon. Problem is, when you add fillers to the Teflon, they're no longer 100% chemically compatible. You, you, you're adding things to the Teflon that make it not 100% compatible. The great thing about the expanded Teflon and you guys probably know this just by it being talked about from Gore-Tex. The, the Teflon has been expanded in a process that introduces air into the Teflon. It, it looks like a spider web, but when it's compressed in a gasket connection, in a bolted flange connection, all those fibers basically redensify to the densified, the full density aspect of virgin Teflon without any of the bad characteristics coming along with it, all right? So our technology employs expanded Teflon along with insert technology. Some real world examples of this creep and cold flow phenomenon. Can you see the gasket material basically oozing out of the tongue and groove connections here? out of the connection basically. Here's an example from uh, a load cell apparatus that we have as to, as to maintaining the load put on, on the bolted flange. So the top one is a uh, Teflon. Uh, it's, it's been taken up to about the 10 to 12,000 range and you can see how the load has fallen off. Using the right technology you can bring that same 10 to 12,000 PSI gasket stress up on the right material since it's been selected properly and you can see how it maintains its load over time. This is critical. If, if I can select a gasket material that's going to maintain stability within my connection, then I, I get a much higher, more consistent, more reliable connection over a longer period of time. Flange rotation is a big problem. If you select a ring gasket to go on a connection that's designed for a full face or a reduced area gasket, you can expect to damage the flange itself. The flange will bend around the ring gasket because it's not supported properly within the, within the design ancillary. Nut embedment is another bad habit that we have. If we don't use washers, and we, and we tighten bolts up on these soft ductile stainless steel flanges, I guarantee you the nut is going to embed itself into the flange, you're going to lose bolt load, and your tank's going to leak. These are all very simple things to teach our service providers as to do's and don'ts as how to bolt these things up and how to service the equipment properly. This is another very dangerous practice is to use inexpensive envelope gaskets that do not provide the proper mechanical stability over time. The fact that these gaskets can fracture like this within a connection could be the difference of a successful trip and a very nasty unsuccessful trip. So again, I, I stress the selection process within your decision tree. So Richie's going to take the Teflon gasket out. How long has it been in there, Richie, now? Five, six minutes? And what value do we have? So it's dropped 1,400 pounds in six or seven minutes, okay? We're going to put another type of gasket in here. 
I'm here to do a little sales work, so we're gonna we're gonna put one of our gaskets in here. It's called the PETA technology. It's just to get just to show you the difference between loss of load and how easily selecting the right gasket can secure, maintain the load, and provide a much more reliable, leak-free condition for you to operate your equipment. So this, this is not rocket science, guys, but there is a little science involved, and taking advantage of new technologies can really improve your operations, because if most successful companies are the ones that uh, adopt new technologies, it allows them to change their business model slightly, and you can take you can you can gain competitive advantages within the marketplace by by taking advantage of those type of things. So what value we have? Forty eight hundred. So we're gonna we're gonna continue to talk for a few minutes. We're gonna let that sit in there for five to six minutes like we did the other one. This is this is what allows the technology to work. Uh, we're gonna pass around some samples so you guys can look at these. What we found was that the expanded Teflon material is a great material to use because of its mechanical stability. But its Achilles heel is the fact that it has to have a lot of bolt load in order to become from a soft, pliable material, which is good for our, our industry. It, it fills the corrosion rough surfaces, but as it's being compressed, between two flanges, it pre-densifies. It densifies and turns itself back into a full density Teflon. But it takes a lot of bolt load for that to happen. So what I've done is embedded a corrugated stainless steel, 316L stainless steel insert inside that facing so that I can achieve the type of gasket stress that's needed that's only provided by the fasteners that are on the tank. So nobody really wants to go back and put high dollar, high strength fasteners on a tank container. It's basically cost prohibitive. So changing the gasket technology makes sense in this regard because it's, it, although it's a two or three times jump in price, it is much less expensive to do than to re-outfit the tank with heavier duty, beefier flanges or, or, or hardware that's, uh, that's more expensive. So this gasket, is compared to a normal gasket and, and on the bottom and what we've done here is use some Fuji film. It's pressure sensitive film so the more pressure applied to it the more little ink spots explode and the darker the line gets. So under the same boat load conditions the bottom gasket you can see how the gasket stress is spread over the face of the gasket and we have some very faint to medium color differential within that strata. On, the, on this technology, you can see that we've not only created very high concentrated zones of stress, but we've point loaded that thing consecutively. So there's three corrugations in that insert, and there's three, there's three zones of, of concentric stress zones that provide you this type of reliability that, was, that wasn't it, it wasn't available of years past. So the fact that these materials have been developed uh, in the aerospace industry and some other places, they're, they're becoming more common and more affordable for us to use in our everyday lives. Uh, one of the reasons I uh, uh, support the space program globally, the Orion project that's taking place presently is a, is a, a boon to, to all mankind, much like the Apollo project was uh, decades ago. So from a gasket comparative aspect, if you're running dedicated equipment, this is, this is a critical decision tree conversation to have with, with your folks within the plant, your logistics people, and your service providers. I'm not saying to employ all this on your one trippers because the, ga the envelope gaskets do a pretty good job on one trip tanks. You know, the, the, as fast as our global commerce happens today. Typically, a tank can get loaded, put on a ship. It can be uh, halfway around the world in five to 10 days. This technology is, however, the lowest life cycle cost possible for dedicated service equipment. And typically, the dedicated service equipment uh, deals with all the hazardous materials, okay? 
It is also good from a hydro to hydro standpoint. Richie, what do we got on the on the gauge there? From 48. So it's, it's, it's basically lost 200 pounds of load within the same time period compared to uh, the Virgin Teflon that lost 1,400. So over time, that, that, will, that will level out and become consistent over time. The next thing I would like to talk about is the fact that the gaskets have been designed in such a way from a, a stocking standpoint that we have multiple bolt patterns within the same connection. So basically five or six different gaskets fit all the different connection types that you would find from T11 to T23. Uh, Richie is going to, at this point, we're gonna talk to you a little bit about the fastener aspect. This is a very important thing. And we want you guys to understand how fasteners behave and the typical characteristics that you'll find with all fasteners being utilized in our industry. We have carbon steel fasteners being used on gas tanks. We have stainless steel fasteners being used on liquid tanks, T11 through T23. We have a mixture of those being used on uh, critical service tanks. Um, some are galvanized coated, some are B7 carbon steel, some are uh, a480 grade stainless versus A270 grade stainless. So there's a myriad of different fasteners, but all fasteners exhibit the same characteristics, just a little differently, much like the gasket materials. So we need to understand two very important things, and I'm gonna go back to these UN regulations. What the heck happened here? So we're going to talk about consistent and repeatable means for closure. So we're going to show you guys how easy it is to really acquire this aspect of this regulation, consistent and repeatable means. So Richie's going to take a brand new fastener, we're going to put it in this same gauge, and we're going to tighten it up, we're going to tighten and loosen it three times. When we do this, I want, to, I want you guys to think about what should happen here. And this is a little counterintuitive because my brain tells me if I have a brand new fastener and I tighten it up the same way three times in a row, I should get three values exactly the same. And we're going we're gonna to show you why that's not the case. So Richie set his torque wrench at about 35, 30, 30 foot pounds, and we're going to apply only that 30 foot pounds to all, the, to, to all of the tightening and loosening as we do this. We're also not gonna skew the values, so he's only gonna use the torque wrench in the positive direction. We have another, another wrench here to loosen this thing up so we don't, we don't skew the values on the torque wrench. So what do we got, Richie? This, now this is to simulate what takes place in a depot. The tank comes in, something's wrong with the valve, the valve needs to get fixed, take, take the bolts off, fix the valve, and we use the same bolts and we put them and we put the back, back on the tank. Well, hang on, Richie, I want you to do it one more time. So typically on a, on a container's life expectancy is a 20 year period. It has to go through a two and a half and five year test on a periodic basis. No telling how many times it goes through the tank wash where the bolts are taken off, tanks are clean, valves are put back in place. Those bolts could be, could be reused as many as 50, 60, 80, 100 times. 